morning. You all right? Drink to your outdoor adventure. And Billy. I've got him out lead in a minute because uh, I don't want him to disappear while I'm just doing something. And there's a lot of deer in here and hers and all sorts of uh, pheasants. So he's in his element. How's it going anyway? It's uh, always fantastic to be out, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. Well, I was tagged a couple of weeks back by uh, Mark Bailey to show me uh, three luxury items. So while we're out today, I'll show you my kit. I'll show you my general bushcraft kit, the stuff I take with me for whether it's an overnighter or seven overnighters a month, whatever. This is the sort of kit, well, this is the kit that I would take with me. Obviously, it's going to be supplemented by a few little bits and pieces, depending on the time of the year, you know, and, uh, and where I'm travelling. But as a rule, this is my standard kit that I take all the time. So, we're going to lay that out, and then I'm going to show you my three luxury items. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Cheers. Let's get on with it, eh? <clears throat> so, first job, found a decent spot. My main bit of kit, really, eh? Well, as soon as I start talking, he always jumping up and down, he loves it. So, my main bit of kit on every trip is my shelter, yeah? So, and the one I carry all the time that I go to, whatever time of year it is, all year round, summer, winter, whatever. The tarp's my favourite bit of kit, yep. So that's my first bit of bushcraft kit that I love and that I use all the time. Whether it's snowing and blowing and hail or whether the sun's shining, yep. I love my tarp, yep. I mean, obviously you're gonna change that around sometimes. If you know you're gonna be camping in midge-infested territory, you're gonna have something with a bug net, you know, maybe a hammock or whatever. Might be strung underneath this, but as a rule, I can do with this all year round, yeah? If I can put up with the midges. Mind you, in the islands of Scotland, it's a different kettle of fish. You need that bug net. But this is my go-to. And if I was just setting off on a mission, throwing my kit in my pack, I'd be going for this every time. Types up. You always need, uh, like I say, it's a bit of a one of them dodgy days today. If I'm going to get my kit out, I might as well bang the top up, then I'm right. None of them shitty titanium uh, toggles. Hey, if you can't get a bloody wooden toggle when you're a bushcrafter, hey, you're missing a trick there somehow, ain't you? What's the point in carrying them in even if they're titanium? Hey, it's part of the bushcraft game, isn't it? Right, well, on the back of my pack, I always have an old builder's type. Yeah, not a big one, just enough. You know, even if it's eight foot by four foot, something like that, even six foot by three, four foot. Yep, yeah, it's enough to cover my sleep in pattern. So it's enough to cover the length of me, basically. Yeah, and to protect me, the rest of my kit. But it's just, just lightweight, there's no two of them. And they're that multi-useful. The shoves in the back of my LK35 on there. But I can use this for all sorts. I use this for carrying clay up from the river if I'm building something out of clay. I use it for uh, filling with uh, bedding. Yeah, if I'm using natural bedding to drag it up. I use it for, a, there's a million and one uses for a good old builder's type. It doesn't weigh hardly anything, packs up small, slides down the back bands, great bit of kit. So I'm gonna lay this out. Simple as that. I can peg that down now if I want, or I can just leave it like that. There's no wind today, so it's probably all right like that. Right, I'll talk you through my basic kit that, like I say, this is what I go out with every time. Yep, yeah, it might switch about a little bit depending what skills I'm practicing, but if I'm just going out to live outside and to travel and engage in my bushcraft while I'm moving and, and living outside, 
this is a, this is the kit that I would carry every time. Like I say, if I was going out specifically to practice flint and steel, I'd bring my flint and steel kit. Yeah, but if I'm just moving, it's ferro rods, a lighter, etc. Your traditional sort of fire lighting. Yeah, three methods of fire pack. Yeah, and uh, if I was going out to carve and, and spend time in the woods carving. I'd bring more carving tools, you know, maybe an auger and a drill and maybe a spoon carving knife, etc. Sometimes I just chuck that in this normal kit anyway because they don't weigh much. But as a rule, this is my day-to-day, -day, well, overnight kit, sorry, I should say. If I was out just for the day, the pack would be a third of the size of that. But this is my overnight kit or multiple nights kit. So, first off. My LK35, this is my traditional sort of pack that I use. I've got a couple of other packs. I've got a Swedish hunting pack that uh, is only about 15 quid, something like that, but it's a great lightweight pack, a lot lighter than the LK35, which is great for days. But I still use this on day pack day trips sometimes, well, quite often. But then especially when I'm working and I'm with groups, I'll probably be using this. But yeah, so. Got my axe. Now today I'm carrying, uh, because I'm bringing out the kit that I would take if I had the choice most of the time, it'd be this one, which is the Ultifus uh, Forest Axe. So I've got my Ultifus Forest Axe, 19 inch handle, fantastic for nearly every task. I can quite happily go into a boreal forest for a long time and build a decent shelter with this and be able to chop wood with this be able to carve with this, be able to skin with this, prepare animals with this, all sorts of stuff. This is a great axe, which is not too big, not too small, but strong enough and heavy enough to do the job quickly of limbing, taking trees down, limbing trees, bucking them, building shelters, etc, etc. The great axe. Next up. My Pathfinder mug and nesting bottle, yep. So, and this is all I would take with me, yep. Occasionally, I might take a frying pan, depending on what I'm doing, but if I was just setting off, I'm happy with this, I'm happy just with this, yep. I can cook, and I'm gonna drink, and everything else out of that, but I don't need another cup. This one cup will do me. I'm gonna drink out of it, I'm gonna make me food in it, or else I'm gonna make me food in a traditional primitive manner on the fire. Yep, if I'm boiling it, it's going to go in here, etc. Other than that, it's going to be roasted over the fire. It's going to be on the embers. It's going to be on hot rocks, etc., etc. But, uh, yep, so that'll do me. If that were to break, I can still boil my water in this. Yep, I don't really, I don't use that because I don't need to. I use that to boil my water. But if I didn't have this or it broke, yep, or I lost it, I'll be able to use this. Yep. But I always have two bottles so I have this one and I carry another one yeah this is just a plastic one it's always handy to have two bottles for filtering and the likes and stuff like that yep and I'll take two bottles with me because you soon smash a litre of water before you have to start making water safe next bit of kit my first aid kit you might be looking at that and thinking, hell fire, that's a bit of a... But I work with groups as well and it's just easy just to chuck my kit, my kit in and I know I've got everything. It's in a waterproof container. It's not massive, but I know I'm covered for all eventualities here, no matter what I'm doing. Yeah, there's, I mean, I've got... Uh, there's tablets, there's medication in there. There's uh, all sorts. There's a tick remover. There's all your, all your bleed kit, your tourniquet, okay, everything else. So it's a full it's a full setup there for all sort of eventualities. So I just chuck it in with me. I've got several of these. Next up, pair of gloves. Always come with me. Yeah, mainly for use around the fire, hot pans and bits and pieces and, and what have you. They're they're invaluable when you need them. They're ace. Better than rolling up your sleeves and trying it, you know. And for, for it's what the air size of them, and even if it's a bit cold. You can chuck them on. Wooden spoon. I probably made ten years ago. Yep. That's all I'll take. Yeah, as a rule. That'll do me for everything I'll eat with that. 
I'll mix it up or whatever. Yep. Spot on. I stick it in the ground when I'm not using it. I fashion the end of it so I can take the lid off my zebra tin if I'm using my zebra tin. A good knife. Yep. Good strong bushcraft knife that will do any task I throw at it. Yeah. It's a great knife. Cast drum. Large felt knife. So a good knife. My filter bag. Brown's filter bag. Yeah. Same as the Millican ones. Back in Second World War, maybe First World War, I don't know. But uh, great bit of kit. So I use that a lot. watching what Billy's watching we're trying to see cordage always have a good anchor cordage I have a couple of these me saw Laplander saw yep I know a lot of people use silkies that are fantastic I love a Laplander yep I like these as well for working with groups and stuff because they bend yep they're not going to shatter and it's a pain in the ass when they bend you've got to bend them back and ultimately you might end up with a new blade at some stage but they ain't going to shatter they ain't going to s snap if you if you if you get it offline which a lot of kids do and what have you and uh, i could do with a new blade on this really it's getting that way i've had a few blades on it but uh, great bit of kit love a lap landy got a little bit of oil in the back of there for cooking My food pouch, yeah. Not only food pouch, there's all, there's, this is my fire kit. It's my food pouch. It's uh, my, my cleaning pouch, it's got my toothbrush in it. It's got a bit of soap in it. It's got my coffee in it. It's got a head torch in it. It's got some emergency fire stuff. And it's got food in it as well. And obviously depending on the length of my trip, I would add extra food pouches. But that contains a good chunk of my kit, my, my, uh, like I say, my torch and stuff like that, my safety type kit like that. Spare ferro rod. Now I get to my sleep kit. Bivy bag. Out kit, hunker bivy bag. Fantastic lightweight bit of kit. And I've used this all over the show in the mountains and everything. We're out a tarp and we're out tents or anything. Great bit of kit. For the size of it, I could shove that in my pocket if I wanted. So I'll shove that in because I'm talking all year round here. Summer, autumn, winter. Yep, yeah, and spring. So I mean, uh, I'm using this stuff. I mean, I'm not going to use that in summer when it's, when it's roasting, am I? You know, and, I, and I'd probably leave it at home. But I'm going to chuck it in <coughs> if I was travelling through various climates and whatever and I was out all the time that's going in my pack because in winter this is a fantastic little bit of kick yeah even in a tent in winter when it's really cold just gives you that added my sleeping bag not a little one don't pack up small fantastic bit of kit though now I'm not going to do a proper review now but I'll do a proper review on this next week now this is the uh, snug pack. Snug pack Elite 3. Great bit of kit. Yep. Uh, ratings are 5 degrees. Minus 10. Minus 10 lowest. It's a great bit of kit. Well, yeah, it weighs. It's not. It's not little. It weighs about fifty-six ounces. But depends what you want. I'd love it. You know what I mean? A three hundred quid uh, rab down thing that'll pack up to about that big. But sixty quid. I think I paid sixty quid for that a couple of years back. And uh, fantastic. And I've never ever been cold in this. I've used it all year round. Yeah. And I've used it. I even use it now in summer. Just unzip it and lie in it, and it's right. But 
I love that bit of kit, that's a great bit of kit, yep. So that's my go-to. The bag that I put it in, that becomes my pillar. So my jacket and my clothes, I usually sleep in my boxes, so all my clothes get shoved in here. That's my pillar, yeah. If it's too cold to take my clothes off, I can shove that with the uh, leaves and, uh, you know, debris and what have you, and I've still, I can still make a decent pillar out of it, yeah. And it still does a great job. What I usually do is I turn it inside out if I'm going to fill it with debris. Yeah, then I'm not getting the inside all, all messed up. Then I can just turn it back the right way around in the morning to put my bag in or whatever. But, uh, yeah, so that becomes my sleeping pillow. And that's my kit. And I'm happy with that kit. Yep, travelling with that. I have one extra thing as well. And I'll be doing a review on this soon. And uh, Mitchell from Colorado Bushcraft, top geezer, sent me uh, a leather belt pouch. Yep, fantastic bit of fantastic bit of kit. And what I'm carrying in there at the minute, I've got a small fishing kit. I've got a Swiss Army knife. I've got a spare ferro rod and some cordage. So. Brilliant stuff. So if you move, if you're moving around and say I'm, and I'm travelling, I've got the facility, I've got my cordies there. If I need to go fishing, I can build traps, I can make, I can fish, I can catch fish, etc. I've got all the kit I need. The Swiss Army knives are fantastic. So that's my multi tool. It's got the pliers on it and everything. Uh, it's got the scissors and all sorts of stuff. So if I'm making containers out of bark and thing, all the intricate, it makes it all nice and easy. And uh, the saw's brilliant on it. Fantastic with a ferro lighter. So I've got that Swiss Army knife in there as well. So that's my kit basically. Well now, I'll show you my three luxury items. Right, looking at making life easier for myself and these three luxury items that Mike was asking about. Yeah, Mike Bailey, top guy. If you don't follow him or whatever, uh, look him up and uh, give him a follow. He's, uh, he's a good lad, he knows his stuff. He's, uh, he's a proper outdoorsman. Yep, he knows his stuff. Whatever whatever you want. <laughs> whether, it's, whether it's climbing, mountaineering, uh, fishing, bushcraft, shooting. Whatever, he's been there and done it, haven't you, mate, mate? So anyway, check him out. But, uh, yeah, so these three luxury items for me, and you can probably see with me, Kit, I don't really carry many luxury items, you know? There's no, uh, there's a lot of stuff you can carry, and, you know, maybe I should carry a few bits and pieces, you know? You see these people with fold down chairs, don't you? And fold grills and all sorts of stuff. And you think, bloody hell, it makes life easy, doesn't it? But uh, at the minute, I'm still roughing it in a way. But uh, I don't mind. Yep, I don't mind. I like it. I like using a tree as uh, as my seat. Yep. I like uh, making my own grill. I like uh, I like doing it the old school bushcraft way if I can. Yep. But uh, not to say there's anything wrong with carrying all that shit. You do what you, what makes you happy, don't you? Yep. And there's no point coming out it was to suffer. Yep, you've got to enjoy yourself. So, but my three luxury items. Yep. Something as simple, because I never used to carry these. A plate. And a spork. Yep. Now that's... That's one of my luxury items because it just makes life in camp so much more, uh, I don't know, pleasurable in a way, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm quite happy just shooting. I have, and I did for years and years and years, just take one tin and, and, and eat straight out of that. Yeah, and I still do sometimes, depending how light I want to travel. But if I'm going to go out nowadays for a few days, because it doesn't take any space up, does it? A plastic plate. Yep, and my spork. It's a titanium spork. Yep. I've used sporks a lot in the mountains for a long, long time. 
and I got fed up with a plastic one snapping. Yep, yeah. losing one of these prongs on the end of the fork and bits and pieces. Yeah, when they're stuffed in your pack and what have you. Titanium one, it's bomber. It's a great bit of kit. Yeah, well worth spending that little bit extra for the titanium one. And the plastic uh, plate is great because it doubles as a, as a great little chopping board. Yep, yeah. I've made plenty of chopping boards in the time. Yep, yeah. splitting a log down and shaping it. But I mean, this just does a fantastic job. Get your onions and your peppers and your potatoes on there and etc. Chop them all up. So much easier and cleaner. Straight into your pan or whatever. Fantastic. And uh, and you've got somewhere to put it on and eat and feel a bit like uh, a bit posh. So yeah, that's one of my luxury items. Next luxury item. And I suppose it's luxury to me. I suppose uh, we all carry some some sort of mat to lie on within reason. I mean, I've spent many a time in woods just lying on uh, a bed of natural material and debris and what have you. And you can do it, and it does the job. <coughs> but you get to 50, you've been running around in mountains and everything else, and playing football or whatever else you've been doing all all these years, and you're always carrying a few injuries and a few knocks and bumps and bruises. Dodgy knees, dodgy hips, dodgy backs, etc, etc. So I love a good mat. So nowadays, and this has been brilliant, this one. Yep, the mountain equipment, helium 3.8, full size mat. Doesn't pack up tiny, again, like the sleeping bag. But it's worth it, it's worth carrying that exercise for a good night's sleep. And it just makes so much difference. Yep, yeah, it's an inflatable one <coughs> with a foam insert as well. So it's got a foam insert and then inflatable on top of that. And it really does do a good job. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I'm not having to roll over <laughs> half as much as I would just sleeping on the deck. Yeah, it's really good at insulating you from the ground. It's great in the mountains. It's great in the forests. I always tend to take this tarp with me, so I'm protecting it from the ground. But I've camped in loads of forests with loads of sharp sticks and thorns and all sorts about, you know. And with this mat on the ground, touch wood, it's done pretty well. And uh, it's not popped or anything, it's done a great job. And uh, yeah, I love that. So that's one of my luxury items. <coughs> my final luxury item just to make life easier. Here, my final luxury item. I'll carry a, a Sawyer mini filter. Yeah. But it just, again, just makes life easier. If you're moving quickly or whatever and uh, you need a drink, yeah, and you're not having to get that Browns filter bag out and filter it and boil it or you know what I mean, it just, I mean that's part of it and I enjoy that side of it and using them Browns filter bags and everything. But this just makes it a little bit easier if, you, if you're on the on the move and you want to you want to get sorted, you want to drink, yeah. There's no need to get dehydrated with a, with a little Sawyer mini filter about. The fantastic, yeah. I quite often throw an old plastic bottle in with it because it's easier than using the bag it comes with. The bag's alright, packs down dead small. The straw's all right to drink straight from the streams, etc. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, no, a great little bit of kit. And uh, I'll do a proper review on one of them one day. <clears throat> but that'll get rid of 99.9% uh, .9 of bacteria, you know, and your salmonella. And uh, and then it'll get rid of your protozoas like your guardia and stuff like that. So it's a great bit of kit. 99.9%. .9%. I'm pretty happy with that. So yeah, that's a good bit of kit. Well, thanks for joining us, and thanks for tag Mark, uh, Mr. Mark Bailey. Cheers. So there are my three luxury items. So my soya mini filter, my plate, and my spork, and my uh, sleeping mat. Good boy. You're a good lad. And they're the things that make my life easier when I'm out here. 
and make it a little bit nicer. That little bit of luxury. So, I mean, luxury items could be anything. They could just be expensive bits of kit that you see as a bit of a luxury. Yeah, instead of a £11 Mori, you've got a 200 quid uh, custom knife or whatever. But they're my sort of luxury items. So I'm going to tag somebody. So I'm going to tag Mark from Wire Explorer. So if you've ever seen Mark, he does all sorts of stuff. So I'm damn sure he's got a few little bits of kit that he likes to take with him. Them luxury bits. He does all sorts from kipping in abandoned buildings to caravans to remote farmhouses to mountain tops to valleys to woods, forests, every all sorts of little bits and pieces. So Mark, show us your little luxury items. Those little things that make life easier for you or more comfortable. Alright. And anyway, good lad Billy. Anyway, thanks for joining us. So from Rick and Billy, Rick T Outdoor Adventure and Little Billy Bobs, who's always along for the ride whenever possible. Look after yourselves and uh, we'll catch you again soon. I'm going to get a brew on and a bit of noodles and chill in the forest for a bit. So, anyway, catch you again soon. See you later. Ta-da.